so the solar on this camper came with a 50 watt panel that is enough to recharge the batteries to just run the fridge, which is good. Uh, but we like to run all the 110s. So I got 200 amp hours of lithium. Uh, the charge controller doesn't work for lithium. So I got a new charge controller. I'll flip it around and show you everything. The winds here is real bad though. So I'll probably just cut it out, maybe voice over um, if it sounds bad. But uh, so I apologize for that for right now. Um, but let me flip this around and show you what we're looking at. Here is the Renergy 40 amp charge controller. It's an MPPT, so that should be good to go. And it'll def definitely handle lithium. So that is the big one on changing that out. And then here is the itty bitty little charge controller that we're using right now. So uh, 10 gauge going into like 12 gauge. So we'll take those 10 gauge right into the, the rover. Uh, the wires should be thick enough from my research, so I'm not gonna have to pull all new wires through the camper, which is good. Uh, we shouldn't have to worry about melting down the camper anyways. I'll put a, a fuse in, so I'm not really worried about that at all, but that little guy is next to go. Okay guys, so here is just a comparison of the difference of the charge controller. So the itty bitty guy versus ginormous uh, MPPT Rover. So huge upgrade there. We should have no issues at all with the uh, the wattage and the amps that are coming in. So pretty excited for this. All right, so there she is in that cute little 50 amp uh, solar panel is putting out a nice 0.24 amp. So uh, that would get it done, I guess, with just the fridge. Maybe we got enough amp hour, so not too concerned, but it'll be excited to pump out like 20 amps plus probably with 400, I mean, on a, in Texas, maybe like 50 amps. So pretty excited uh, for that. Uh, here's the Forest River mess of wires. So, I mean, good or bad, I I don't know. I probably am gonna clean this up. Uh, there's the bus bar for the, the um, negative. And um, so I got a, a, a shunt I'm gonna put in for a better battery monitor. So that's next, but now, let me get the cover on. I'll show you how they hide all this. So that right there is how they hide it. They get a, a piece of plastic. They just screw it in. Um, it works uh, with the lithium. We really don't need like the battery box, but I'll get that in and get that cleaned up. Uh, so again, just to try to make things look as neat in here as possible. But um, but yeah. So charge controllers in. Pretty excited about that. And uh, that's. Step one in the uh, this whole solar deal. All right, moving on to the next part. Here's what we got in here, which is a 1200 watt, uh, 1200 watt, um, it's pure sine wave. So pretty good inverter. Um, that's the line that goes to the fridge. I'm guessing because that's the only one it works off of. I don't know where the black line goes to. Uh, so we're gonna dive in here and open this up and uh, take a look at it and, and maybe I'll get a, a little bit more idea of how this, this bad boy's wired up here in just a second. All right, so this is why you don't buy stuff before you have your camper here, because you don't know exactly what you're dealing with. And this guy is actually a very nice inverter. The one line is the line in from the panel and then it has its own 30 amp transfer switch built in and then the line out. So as soon as I cut the power, it automatically starts working so the fridge never loses. I did not realize that, uh, which it's nice to have a $500 uh, dollar inverter in here. So what I was gonna do was put the 3000 watt guy in to replace it. But since that one is really good, um, we're gonna leave that. We're still gonna run the way that I watched off of YouTube, but now you drill a hole through and put the 3000 watt over there. So it's still out of the battery bank um, inside to keep it safe. Um, but what does that mean? So what that means is I've actually changed my mind since last night uh, because keeping it safe in there is where the kids are. So it's probably not gonna be safe. So actually I'm gonna put it out here that's a spare tire holder. I'm gonna move it over and put the spare tire as close to the charge controller as possible. And then I'm gonna mount up the 3000 watt inverter there, which then we can run um, a 100 amp fuse 
and uh, the lines right here to the battery. So that should solve it. And then the good part is, is down here in the battery underneath where I move it here, there's actually a hole. Well, I'm not gonna lift it up and show you, but just trust me, there's a hole out there that I can then run the extension cord down. So what will happen is, is I bought a 10 gauge extension cord that will run out the bottom of the camper and then over here, and I bought a connector from a 50 amp to a um, uh, 15 amp. So we'll run the extension cord, plug it in, that will feed in, we'll flip off the, uh, uh, flip off the microwave, the air conditioner, the hot water tank, and it will run everything and then flow from the panel through the other inverter back up to the fridge. So the fridge will still be working too. So uh, that should solve everything. We should be able to run, I mean, get all the plugs. Uh, if I get more uh, battery amp hours, I because I put the soft start RV on the air conditioner, I could probably run that too. Um, but uh, we'll have the cord here too, and then the generator. So if it runs down, we'll have a battery monitor to let us know, and then we'll just kick on the generator for a couple hours. Um, but I think that we should have a good amount of 200 amp hours of lithium before we'll need the generator. And that's the plan. Uh, up on the roof, I've got 400, uh, two, or four 100 watts for 400 watts uh, total solar. So four 100 watt panels coming uh, in die core, but it's freezing here still. So we're gonna wait. We're just gonna take them with us. I'm gonna install those while we're down in Texas in the, in the heat um, to get this thing really fully off the grid as much as possible. So I'll uh, get this uh, going and then give you an update when uh, hopefully I get it all done and we'll test there out. So that white and blue wire right there or actually the white and black wire right there, same difference with the two greens. Want to count those two. Uh, they go down through the underbelly and underneath the girls' uh, bedroom. So that is gonna be quite the fishing project to get the battery monitor, the um, controller for the inverter where I wanted it. So um, we're gonna try another route. Let me show you where that is. It's not where I want it, but it's gonna make life a whole lot easier and I'm okay with that. And I sit right up in our bedroom anyways for the uh, for working, so I'll be able to see it. Uh, the battery monitor portion, which will make me happy too while we're working. So let's show you where that hole is. Okay, so here's the cool news. There's already a hole punched there. That's for the lights for the cap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it right through there and then right up here, which is comes in you really can't see, but let's see if I can show you a little bit better. There we go. So that is the um, the washer, dryer, if we ever put, whoa, there we go, whoa. Hey, there we are. Uh, washer, dryer, so we ever put a washer, dryer in here, that's the discharge, and then the water line. So we'll go right up through there. That actually goes to the dresser. Oh, hang tight with me here on the floor. That goes into the dresser and then right up the side of the dresser is a 110 plug and some 12 volt outlets. So I'll just put them right next to there and that'll work. Again, that's where I sit for work while I'm working out of the camper. So that should be good. And then I can just flip it on, flip it off. Um, the only thing I have to remember is to flip off the converter box and the panel, but um, I should be smart enough to remember that. I'll see it start to like drastically go down the battery voltage if I forget. So. That should give me a, hey, idiot, go do that anyhow. Uh, but that's it, that's really all like the safety precautions that I'll need to do. Um, so now I'm gonna wire the inverter now that I got a game plan. So here is the 3000 watt inverter, pure sine wave, so I shouldn't have to worry about my work computer or any other electronics. I'll link the uh, description below if anyone wants to check it out, but pretty good specs um, and not too bad price-wise compared to a lot of other things. What it doesn't have like that other one is that there's no 110 in or out. So it's just straight 110 out. So there's no pass through and no transfer switch. That's why the one in the camper is so superior and it's about double the cost of this, but it's only 1200 watts where this is 3000 watts. So we should in all reality be able to power almost anything we want with this as long as we uh, have the battery juice. All right, so update time, and um, just to get to it, it works. So here we go. That's our 3000 watt, and show you what I'm doing right now. I've got our 50 amp cord that we'll keep, of course, with us, going into a 30, going into a 15. This is how we plug it in the, the garage while we're home. Uh, before I put, I'm gonna put a dedicated RV plug in, but this works to just keep everything charged. Uh, but going into the 3000, the 3000 watt is on. 
We have it coming down, going through a 100 amp uh, fuse, and then going to the battery. Um, all I could find was black cables at Tractor Supply, so everything's black, the ground's black, the positive's black, but um, that is the positive. They are one aught cables instead of four aught, but we hope to never use the full 3,000 watts. So I'm not really too concerned about it. Uh, I have the hot water tank on there. Um, we'll plug into the generator if need be. So this should be good for us to run all our regular 110s instead of the high amp draw ones at the charge controller. So we got that itty bitty um, panel up there. We're at 94%, 93. I'm about to put in a battery monitor. So that will give over where we at and, and how much we're drawing. Have a guy excited to go on vacation here soon? <laughs> All right guys, so super cheap way. Oh, one thing in the battery compartment, right? Which is a no-no with um, sealed batteries. This is lithium though, so not a concern at all. But just keep that in mind. If it was lithium, it needs to go in the other compartment. The other thing too is that I wasn't gonna put it in the other compartment, but in all reality, this is gonna be safer than us throwing junk into it. There's plenty of room around it uh, for airflow, so I'm not really concerned at all. With that being said, I'm not a pro, so follow and choose to do this on your own. I'm not giving you advice, but happy to help out with any questions. We really appreciate you guys watching. So if you can give us a thumbs up and uh, click subscribe, we'd appreciate it. But happy to have you along. And uh, thanks for uh, watching this video and hopefully it helps you out. Bye now. Bye. Okay, last last update, because the battery uh, monitor went in so smooth. So I wanted to show that to you. Got that all done tonight. Uh, the last thing I need to do is just run the wires, cut the holes, which scares me to death. All oh, this doesn't scare me at all. Cutting the holes in the wood scares me, because uh, when you make them too big, you can't make them smaller. So, um, but right now, I unplugged it. So we're completely on battery. We are not charging anymore, um, because it's, is, I don't know if you can see or not, but it's dusk. I mean, we might have, I, yeah, I doubt there's any solar. So right now we are running. Sorry about making you sick there. We got 199 amp hours. We're pulling 5.89 amps. So the only thing that's currently on is the fridge, all the LED lights, so all the 12 volt lights, and they're working out the inside. So every basically every light's on and the furnace. And so, 5.87 amps isn't too bad. So with that, we have 33 hours and 52 minutes at this capacity to drain those batteries. So pretty excited about that, especially since it's dusk. So as soon as the sun comes out and then we get the solar panels up on top, we, we should be good. As long as we don't run, um, even if we run the microwave, we should be fine with the 3000 watt inverter for a little bit, but we can run our um, air fryer. That's 1500 watts. Not forever, of course, but we can run that. Uh, definitely the coffee pot, that's huge. And um, and yeah, and even with that soft, uh, it'll be interesting. I, I wanna kick on the AC and see how many amps it draws, but we've got that soft start. So it should run, um, but on 200 battery or 200 amp hours, we got good capacity if for the future uh, what i would love is another four more so go 600 amp hours and that should give us basically whatever the heck we wanted to run at that point so um but yeah so yeah it's working we're we're basically gonna be off the grid which i'm pretty excited about that i'll um i gotta run the wires and then i will make the cuts and then show you at the end of this the uh, final install but so far things are looking good and going well and and uh, to be continued <laughs>